All right, this is episode 13 of the Sab Powers podcast. Here with Anna today. How's it going? It's going really good. Well, I mean, considering obviously yeah. locked out, it's good as good as it can be. Uh, yeah, when I get to go outside to get fresh air, it's always a uh, hmm Yeah, the lockdown is crazy. What what have you been doing to uh, keep sane during all this? Uh, well, uh, try not to lose my sanity. <laughs> So just trying to, try to wind up. I've been following like sort of little to-do lists. Um, mm. I'm not necessarily following each of the things, but uh, sort of little things like that, reading. Um, I bought a bike if, uh, when it started. So pretty excited about that because I hadn't cycled for years. I was like, shit, can I do this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've named her Ariel. She's my best mate now. Uh, so she's great. Um, so we go out. That's yeah. awesome. I've never heard of someone naming their bicycle before. I've heard of people naming their boats a lot, people naming their cars. Gotta start naming everything. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, maybe it's the first sign of me losing it in lockdown. I'm gonna name my bike. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna take it to bed with me in the shower. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, actually. So uh, you do comedy too, right? You're a stand-up comedian like me? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. Do, so, uh, in London. yeah. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Yeah, it's just in London. In mm-hmm. London. Yeah. yeah. So, like, now that we can't do like live shows, have you been like jonesing for it at all? Like, you wish you could go do stand up. Uh, yeah, I missed it. It was the first like two weeks. I was like, it's a bit of a nice break. Get to do some more writing, and then I was like, oh, this is doing my head in. So I'm obviously not working either. There's only so much writing I can do. Um, yeah. I feel like that, you know, it's like, oh, shit. Um, so, yeah, so I'm doing, like, sort of Zoom gigs. So I run a mm-hmm. night normally in Covent Garden, just an open mic night we do every Tuesdays. So I've been used to doing that every week. Um, so now I'm taking it on to just fun Zoom gigs, which uh, are totally different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's adjusting to that. Um but I'm missing it absolutely, yeah, no, actually. But like, really how how is doing the Zoom gig? Because I've actually never done one. I was thinking about it, but I was like, I don't know. It seems too weird for me without like having the audience instantly react. Or like, do they instantly react? Do do they laugh and stuff? So I'm still finding like my feet with this. I've, uh, I've only done I think three now. This so it is very different, and it's that finding that balance of do you put everyone on mute. Uh, so the act or yourself don't have that feedback um, or do you have people off mute so when you're hitting a punchline you know someone might sort of laugh or, or not laugh but have a barking dog in the background where they miss that punchline so yeah, yeah. you're like shit which is the you know, loudest person to take off put on mute yeah they're gonna be a rebel we don't want them laughing so yeah. you just find that balance it's it's different it's different <laughs> Um, yeah, that's super interesting, actually. Um, what are your thoughts on Epstein? <laughs> I have to ask everyone. Sorry. <laughs> Do you uh, know who Ep- that is? Um, is he the uh, uh, Epstein? He's the um. Remind me, tell me. So he's it's it's kind of fucked up. I don't really know the whole story because like my memory is really bad and stuff. But I just do it for the meme. Uh, so he was um, like, part of like this whole like child like pedophile oh, ring yeah. thing. and then yeah. he went to jail and uh, he was gonna like maybe expose other people and he killed himself right and most people think that he didn't kill himself because uh everyone else that's involved in that horrible stuff just like had him assassinated or something yeah no i, I actually you know epstein yeah i, I think it's fucked yeah. up he's had the, it's his island isn't it they, they all went to his island mm-hmm. um, yeah exactly <laughs> epstein's island right yeah, so he was the one. Um, and I, I was listening to actually, I think on YouTube, and saying they were saying they don't think he really killed himself because of the way the it was like something around his neck. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is suspicious, and there was obviously a sign, a symbol, apparently the way that it was done, that it was through. Uh, right, and the cameras just happened to not be working at that point, and he was already on suicide watch. It's just too too many coincidences, right? Yeah, and it's tough if you're, uh, you know, just if you're playing with a lot of other powerful people. I can imagine he's got a lot of enemies. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, where can people find you if they want to, like, follow you? Like, do you have a YouTube channel? You got, like, Instagram? Do you want to plug all that stuff right away while people would still be watching? <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, I'm a little old-fashioned, so uh, I'm a Facebook person. Also. Same, I'm same, a, yeah. Cool. So, are you, like, uh, I'm going to, I didn't, I don't know your age, so are you, like, 30, 29? There you go. I'm 29. Most people usually think I'm younger. I was surprised when he said 30. I was like, ah. But yeah. <laughs> how, how old are you? Uh, 34. Oh, nice. So not uh, just five years older than me. Um, but um, yeah, so you can find me. I'm just thinking of Facebook. You know, that right. kind of um, uh, on Facebook, Frenzy Comedy. You just type in Frenzy Comedy. And that's the gig we do. And then you can just find me generally on Facebook, Anna Maria Dewey. You, you've got me there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have been posting some things on YouTube, uh, but I've just got, I'm just trying to get used to it. I do have a few things, but I'm just so used to doing live, you know, when you sort of. Right. Uh, you what's, your, uh, what's your YouTube channel? So um, my YouTube channel, if you go on my Facebook page, you can mm -hmm. see it there. It's just, uh, what is it? It's Anna Little. I'll double check that. I'll double check that. Okay, maybe I'll be able to uh, link it in the description or something. Um, do you do you believe in ghosts? What are your thoughts <laughs> on that? Uh, hmm, no, I don't really. Maybe spirits. Maybe spirits. Yeah, yeah. Are they the same thing? Um, I, I when I was studying a few years ago. I, there was a point where I swear some ghost or something tickled my feet you know you had that kind of experience but it's probably just my uh duvet but you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> get freaked out oh. <laughs> most people seem to lead towards yes I've, I've, this is uh the 13th episode i think and um out of everyone i've only had two people plus me i guess so three people say that they don't believe in ghosts it's it's a weird thing. It's it's. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't. I, I don't know. It's, but when I you know you know those um, TV series with the haunted house and things like that. Right. I think those TV series kind of put me off in a sense because I, I just think they were too fixed. So kind of just thought, well, if it's I don't know. I think they were, those would be too smart. I was. But you know, I'm I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. It's like, yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. Kind of actually, I'm more on the fence and saying I that don't know because I think that like anything is possible, right? It's uh, it's definitely possible that they exist, but it's also possible that they don't. Um, what about what about aliens? Let's hear your thought on aliens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, since like the whole conspiracy <laughs> theories are coming out these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Um. <laughs> No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, okay. Really? You're the first person to say that? You don't think there's any other life at all in the universe or just that they never came here or what? I, do, I, I just probably think aliens would have, if they were like from another planet, okay, yeah. they would be a different kind of air and I don't think they would survive here. Like, mm -hmm. vice versa. Like, you know, if we go up to Mars and we have to have that protection. So, I, the only way... In you might find in between aliens where I don't know different creatures are formed. That's true, I reckon. Yeah, like a a, a, a a planet full of like insects, like a super troopers, baby, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, where did this come from? Yeah. <laughs> like, ones, like um, Mars stuff, but yeah, I, I've never really really. But then obviously, you know, there's that whole thing, isn't there? you know what's going on outside um ufos and things yeah, yeah i don't really know about that like i didn't even do any research into that but yeah apparently the government released some pictures that's supposed to be ufos or something which is pretty hilarious i don't know it seems too crazy maybe it's a way of them distracting everyone from coronavirus <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the coronavirus is the distraction from the aliens. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so uh, how long How long ago did you start doing stand-up? Uh, so I've been doing 
Um, I've had my um, April, at the end of April was my uh, fourth year, and fourth year. So I have my birthday for each year, I do comedy. So I'm four years old in comedy. <laughs> That's young. awesome. Yeah, me too, actually. I've been doing it like about four years. I don't actually remember the exact date that I started, unfortunately. I should have like wrote it down or something, you know, because it would be nice to know like how you know. Do you remember your first show? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, mean, I try and forget it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the first few times, I really like, I, I probably five, first five times I did it, I didn't really enjoy it because I was just too nervous. Mm-hmm. So I was just constantly thinking, and, like, and then like, I did a gig where it was really relaxed, and, you know, people were kind of, like, shouting things out, but it was great with the banter, uh, and I really started enjoying it. So um, just after five gigs, really, but the first one was okay. But uh, it was nerve wracking day. Yeah, still remember it. Still mm-hmm. remember. It. Still what made you? Kids. What so. made you keep going, even though like the first five weren't were so bad or whatever because you were so nervous? But you kept trying, and, and what what gave you that? I think because I was kind of determined to. Because I knew myself that I was analyzing myself too much when I was performing, so mm-hmm. I just wanted to at least do it a few times, just to sort of find that enjoyment. And I, I realized that a lot of it was nerves because for the first like few times I might be shaking all the time. So just a barrier that I had to get through. And then each year I just, I just enjoy it more and more, which is great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I had like the opposite effect. The first time that I performed, I thought that I killed, like I thought I did so well. Right. And then I was just like, Oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be famous within a year. I'm going to like crush it. I'm going to do so good. And then I just bombed a bunch of times after that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe I'm not as funny as I thought. But then, yeah, ever since I kept grinding. And uh, one of the things that, like, I really enjoy about it is, like, all, like, the people that I used to see at, like, comedy shows. It's, like, we had, like, a whole, like, community of friends and stuff just basically uh, in, in this whole area from, like, Niagara to Toronto, pretty much. That's cool. Yeah, it, it's the whole process of it, isn't it? It's kind of nerves going up to it and then knowing it was on gig um that's yeah do you do you, do you, do you video your gigs or anything uh i have like a couple videos of like old sets i've done but like not really not enough and nothing good i have i have one on my youtube from like two years ago it was actually like professionally filmed and everything because like my cousin was trying to make a tv show but it had to be clean right and like my funniest stuff isn't clean in my opinion so but People still seem to enjoy it. It's like one of my most viewed uh, YouTube videos, so I'm pretty happy about that. That's cool. Um, yeah, my mom actually won't come and see me do a gig because I swear quite a lot. Um, <laughs> so, so she hates it. So I'm like, don't worry about it. I remember I did a gig uh, in a church, and I thought it was going to be adults only in this church. So I turned up, and then they were like, there was about 80 people, but all different ages, from like baby to like 80 year olds. Or, you know, quite a range, and uh, the lady in charge was like, I can't swear or anything. I just looked at my thing and was like, fuck am I going to talk about? So yeah. that was really awkward. Yeah. yeah, I've had some really awkward situations like that too, where someone brings their kids, and it's like, really like, you should either know in advance, like that you have to be clean, you shouldn't just have to like switch on the spot, oh, there's kids here. And like, with me, I didn't even see the kids, right? So I was talking about like, the sexual experience uh, happened in a funny way. And then someone yells out, there's a kid here. And I was like, oh, no, like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, like but- that joke bombed because of it. I was like, ah, oh, I was doing so good up to that point. But- <laughs> That's brilliant. No, I, I really, uh, some of my stuff, so I like to look back on it. And there's times when I'll be like, oh, yeah, that was a, that went well. That went spot on. <laughs> and I'll watch it back and be like, oh, no, that didn't go so well. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I thought I got more laughs than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I've, I've done lots of shows, too, where it's, like, not at comedy clubs, where it's, like, super high ceilings. And it's kind of the opposite, right? I was up there, and I thought I was bombing because I couldn't hear anyone laughing. But they are laughing, but you just don't hear it because it just goes into the air. Right. <laughs> you have to like catch the laughs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like outside, outside shows are the worst. You need the comedy clubs. That's why it's like I'm scared that like once this Corona stuff is over, is like 
is everything like ever really going to go back to normal? You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried. I'm paranoid of what's going to happen. What do you, what do you think? I, I am the same. I'm, I'm, I'm also like trying to be realistic because uh, I've got a few friends who are like, no, pubs be open, everything will be fine. Mm-hmm. But realistically, I don't think it's going to happen for a few months. So that's mm-hmm. partly why I'm just sort of trying to keep up with like, Zoom gigs here and there. But um, it's, it's, you know, I, I'm not, I'm worried about it as well. But uh, I think the art, generally, when there's a world, there's a way. So I think whether it's, I was thinking the other day, will it turn around and be, you know, like uh, raves in warehouses? You know how like they were, were banned? Um, <laughs> comedy will suddenly be like in rave places or warehouses hidden away. Underneath <laughs> 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 these comedy, you can't see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got caught <laughs> hopefully it won't get like that <laughs> yeah I, I hope not that, that would be hilarious though actually <laughs> um man raves are crazy i used to do that stuff when i was like 20 or whatever not my scene anymore but it was crazy lots of people doing lots of drugs and stuff <laughs> It's insane, yeah. I still, I still enjoy raving a lot. Yeah. I haven't been for years. I don't even like. I struggle. So after a gig, you know, you catch it up with everybody afterwards. Once mm-hmm. that's done, I'm ready for sleep. You know, I don't. Some people go out afterwards, coming up like, oh, I don't know. You know, I've had a few pints, done a set. It's great. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, coming raving, I don't do anymore. Do you have, do you guys have that same thing in London where it's like you guys you're friends with like pretty much every other comedian or? Um, I think yeah, it's a good circuit. It's mm-hmm. it's um it's it's quite big, so it's lots of like, and I think it, it really also depends on where people live as well. So mm-hmm. I found myself like so when I lived in Wimbledon, which is more southwest of London. I found myself doing more gigs around there. So a lot of people will kind of live near there. So some amount of comedians did those gigs and then I moved to East London and I started circling different. So yeah, we all kind of know each other, but I think we do see each, some of us more than others because of where we live as well. So it's easier for travel. Right, that's, that's, that's interesting actually. Like with here, it's like no one's afraid to drive. They'll, they'll drive an hour for a comedy gig with five audience members and stuff it's super weird like yeah because uh i live like there's a lot of small towns and stuff right so there's all these comedians that put on shows in some small town you gotta drive like i remember one time i drove two hours in a blizzard and no one was at the show and i wasn't even getting paid or anything and it's yeah and it's like it's weird that we like do this just for that little bit of stage time right it's like basically like that's why i started a podcast because like i don't know for for me it's like the zoom shows it's just uh, i don't know if that's really could be my thing i guess i should probably try it before i uh you know but like before i judge it or whatever but um yeah i just like i just need that like outlet uh, that expression or whatever you know i wish i started a youtube channel like 10 years ago or something yeah it's true and that's the thing like because I wanted to do more sort of online things, and you just, mm-hmm. you know, who knew what was going to be in the future a few months ago. But I mean, with the Zoom gigs, it's not for everyone. I mean, there's a few of my friends I've contacted and said, Do you know, do you want to do a few minutes? And some of them are like up for it, and the others are like, Oh, I'm not sure. And I totally get it because sometimes when I'm like, Oh, right, let's do this, I'm like, Oh, what am I doing? Hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's different. Yeah, it's not for everybody. Eh? <laughs> So I you gotta like I'm, practice maybe of what I would do because it's like on screen. Maybe there's like some funny things like getting real close. Is that funny? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? like, <laughs> that's what I do sometimes. I'm like, yeah. hello, everybody. And then you the camera and you're like, they think I'm looking at them, but I have no idea what they're doing because they're there. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like I felt you looking into my soul there, but you're looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very different. I should try it. Put me on one of your Zoom shows. I would love that. I would absolutely awesome. love that. That'd be <laughs> sick. Cool. Um, do you believe, what, what are your thoughts on magic? you think magic is real at all? Uh, I think I kind of, um, 
on the fence as well. I think mm. there's a lot of, it's all illusions, not magic. Right, right, yeah. So I mean, like, okay, we'll just skip that one. <laughs> I, just, I always ask these these crazy questions. I just can't help it. Um, what about like technology? So I've like the, I, like this fear that like technology is gonna get like crazy good in like the next twenty years. Do you see something like that happening? For sure, yeah. I mean, technology is moving so fast now uh, already, um, and also adapting. Before like this whole lockdown, I, I'm not. I wasn't massive social media, but you know, it was a platform to share. Um, and it's scary to think how quick I'm adapt. I'm even thinking of doing an IT course just so I can kind of learn the ropes a bit more. Um, technology is flying, but I don't. I think it's going too fast to the point where you know we can't keep up with it. So mm. it's going to be kind of more of a indigenous kind of group of people who will know how it works and which will, you know it's that fear for me like yeah moving too fast technology. Right. um so if they did this thing and they're putting chips into people's brains and it's like uh you know that thing like elon musk wants to do so it's like you could access your phone you could access the internet all from the would you get that chip implanted or no no yeah i agree i don't want that what if you get hacked is my big thing it's like Get what hacked? <laughs> yeah, so, so people hack into your computers, right? What if they hack into the chip in your brain and then they control you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going on a night out, get really hammered, and wake up with a chip in my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, fuck, I'm set up. <laughs> Shit. Um, well, I'm not going to drink ever again then. <laughs> yeah, they, they start making those. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh for for here it's just uh dinner time, but for you it's like you're probably getting uh the the drinking night on. Do you have you been drinking since uh since quarantine? I've yeah, been drinking a lot. Um, I, that's cool. I wish I kind of wish I was, but um, I'm not. I'm like I don't really drink. I don't drink a lot on my own. Um, so it's so just one of those things. I live I live with a few other people. They do their own thing. I'm on my own for much time. Um, and one of my mates said the other day was messaging me, are you drunk? How are you having a laugh? And I was like, I haven't drunk for ages, I don't drink. I'm like, and, you know, he didn't believe me. I was like, are you serious? Because when I'm out, I drink a lot. You know, yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah. So, <laughs> the lockdown's, uh, it's been a detox, really. Um, so, I, yeah, <laughs> I wish I was. Uh, yeah, that's funny. It's like the different effects on people because like now I'm just like a huge drinker, huge smoker when I wasn't so bad before and lockdown's got me. Now I'm like a chain smoker almost. But uh, And I'm drinking homemade wine every night. Ugh. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, is it quite strong? It must be quite. Yeah, it, it, it's strong and it doesn't taste very good either. <laughs> So you're knacking them back, going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> With quick cigarette. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I mean I smoke, so mm -hmm. love cigarettes. So I, I chain smoke. So it's the first thing I do after I get off aerial, on my bike, like cigarette. Um, but you no, don't I, smoke while you're riding down the street. It's too much to I, focus on, or? Well, I don't know. I'm already like playing games with my friend. Was like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on side, so um, <laughs> it's time to, but it's quite interesting. Again, when I go through the, one of the parks, when you see this with the, the police, and they're like, you know, in four, I play those four of them, and they're all really close together. And you see one of them kind of telling two kids in the distance to, you know, do the two meter thing. And you're like, what the hell? Like, you guys are standing really close. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Like that. That's so crazy. Yeah. And that's so, it's so weird. It's mind blowing. I never like expected uh, something like this to happen. You know, like my whole life, I thought of like what what are the crazy things we could deal with. I thought maybe like a nuclear bomb would go off, maybe, um, maybe like zombies. I didn't think it would be like some sort of really bad cold that would force everyone to stay inside. It's just something that never crossed my mind as a possibility. It's it's a weird time. It's insane, isn't it? Um... Yeah, I can't. Be, <laughs> I I bought this. Um, <laughs> it's a bit bad. I bought a couple of years ago. I bought um, some toilet roll um, off this guy on the street who's just walking around selling a whole basket of toilet roll um, with Donald Trump's face on it. 
Oh, okay. At first I was like, that's so weird. He's selling toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes more <laughs> sense. Though. But he was selling each roll at about two pounds. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to buy one. So I had this roll for ages, probably a year and a bit. You know, I just mm. wanted to save it for a time, you know, where I, you know, have it. <laughs> um, and I only used it about three weeks before all this happened. <laughs> so I was like, fuck's sake. Yeah. I saved it, my golden toilet roll, Trump space in it, <laughs> locked up. That would have been perfect. Ah. <laughs> no. So, yeah, we'll see the stuff about that. <laughs> but, yeah. Man, it's crazy with everyone that would just went out and bought toilet paper. Like, that's so silly to me. Of all the things to buy, like, I'd rather have food in my stomach and a dirty butt. You know what I mean? Is it really like the top priority? <laughs> I don't know. I've never not had toilet paper, so I don't know how bad it is to not be able to wipe your butt. But but, but also, Corona will give you the shit. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah, um, it, it, it is bizarre. And also, mm. it's sort of it's strange going to shops as well. The whole like, I, I, you must have it with a tape. Um, and the tape, the two meter one. And a lot of people don't f follow the two meter rule, which is fine, but it pisses me off because I'll stand at a tape, it's happened a lot. But like, okay, the two meters, fine. But the amount of people that queue jump me as well, they're just like, go ahead of me because they don't obviously don't think I'm actually queuing. Uh, yeah, I dealt with that too. Like the other day, I went to the store just to buy some yeah. cigarettes and I was doing the two meter thing, and then I just kept having people line jump me, like you were saying. And I, I just got mad and I left. I was like, I, oh, yes. I, oh no, sorry, my sig my signal went. Sorry, sorry that probably... Oh, it's okay. It's all good. Yeah, you were you're just frozen. I thought you were just like st staying perfectly still. Like, yeah, you were frozen as well, wasn't you? It was cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Um. So. so is it, I mean, what is it like for you to live in Canada? Like, is it strict? Yeah, it seems pretty strict, but, like, I just stay home all the time. Like, my I live with my parents, so they go out and do all the grocery shopping. Um, they go get the wine. My mom even buys me cigarettes, but I pay her back for them. But, yeah, it was just, like, just like a week ago or something, I went to the store because – she was like, you buy the cigarettes this time. And then I I got all pissed because people just kept coming in line because <laughs> I was doing the two meter thing and they just, and then I was like, ah, oh, fuck this. I'm leaving. But um, yeah, I just like, I miss seeing my friends and stuff. You know, I miss doing comedy. I miss just like driving actually, which is weird. I, I like driving around. Like I have my own car. I like driving. Um, Sometimes like every, like once a week, I'll just take the car for a drive just to like, so it's not sitting there. Um, That's cool. I mean, are they quite strict with that? Like, is there a thing if you drive around, someone can stop you? Or it's just... um, I don't know. But, like, when all this shit first started, I was like, this means I can speed. There's no one on the roads. You know what I mean? The cops are never going to pull me over. They don't want coronavirus. So I was speeding, and I got pulled over, and I got a speeding ticket. So I was pretty upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get excited. Yay. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? There's not even any cars on the road, man. But yeah. I wish I could drive. I, I can't drive at all. Yeah, but uh -huh. li living in a big city, you don't really have to, right? Like, if I lived in Toronto, I wouldn't have a car. If I lived in London, I, I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have a car either, right? Yeah. It's just um, like when, when you live in the middle of nowhere, it's like if I didn't have a car, I, wouldn't, I would never be able to do anything. I'd only be able to stay home because I live like there's like you know just this one house and then my neighbor is like a five minute walk for me yeah that's, that's nice yeah yeah and then they don't really need driving but it does help with comedy because a lot of friends who drive who do more gigs outside of london so right that's, that's a good point true mm -hmm. exactly. but you could always just carpool with them right just yeah pop on yeah. shows with your friends that have cars you know what i mean yeah doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. All right. Well, uh, I think uh, that it's probably been long enough, right? Ended on that. Did you have fun? <laughs> Did you enjoy it? 
I have enjoyed it, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been really good. I thought you were going to ask me about chess, you know. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So the chess podcast is completely different. David got famous off TikTok, though. He doesn't have time for that anymore. I, I haven't used TikTok. Um, is, it, is it like Instagram or what? So it's like Vine, if you ever heard of what Vine was. It's like really short um, videos. So what David does is he'll just release, like, he's got one-liners, like my style too. But uh, so he'll just do like one joke and it's like 10 seconds or whatever. And then he'll put that video up on TikTok. So he's, yeah, he's got like two videos with like over 200,000 views. Um, It just blew up like a week ago. And then tons of videos that have like over a thousand views, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So now he's like, his main focus on that is that. So I had to start my own podcast. But if you want, we like, I love, if he's down to keep recording episodes, I hope he is. Um, I would love to have you on, on Checkmates as well. It'd be sick. That's cool. I'm teaching myself uh, chess at the moment. It's something I've always actually wanted to learn. So mm-hmm. I've been doing it. Yeah, I, I think you told me that actually, uh, which is awesome. But like when even on the Checkmates podcast, it's like usually we'll have two guests on. So it'll be me and David playing chess. And then we'd have you and somebody else on it. And then like the four of us just talk about whatever. We don't even talk about chess most of the time, right? Cool. But, like, usually I'm a little more quiet in those because it's just, like, I, f- I focus on the chess and I kind of just chill. So you won't have to deal with all these crazy Epstein alien ghost questions again. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so uh, is there anything else you want to say before uh, we stop the recording? That's cool. It's lovely to speak to you. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> No, it's fine. Thanks for inviting me on. It's cool. Awesome. Hope you guys well. Cool. Oh, yeah, and I'll give you details of friends who Zoomed it if you ever want to. Yeah, I do. That'd be awesome. Thank you. All right. Take care. And so, um,